Welcome to today's training. My name is Kyle Simon. I'm the owner of Breakthrough Tutoring. I'm super excited to be on this call with you today so that can help you and your son or daughter boost their ACT score from where they are up to a 30 plus on the ACT using the 3C ACT Acceleration Program. Let's get right into it. So who's this training for? Well, if you are a parent of a 10th or an 11th grade student, you might have witnessed them struggle a bit on their ACT. They might have taken test after test and just not seeing the score jumps that they want. And maybe they have that goal of hitting a 30 plus so that they can start applying for some of these merit-based scholarships to lower the cost of college. Now on the other side of the coin, you might be a student that maybe has felt stressed or overwhelmed about the ACT and no matter how many times you take it, your score just stays the same. There's nothing more frustrating than that when you're trying and trying and trying, but you're not seeing the progress that you want. Now, if you are a student that is motivated and driven to do whatever it takes to bust down challenges, to get through obstacles and get to the score goal that you must get, not that you just want, but you must get, you're in the right place. I'm excited that you're here. Now I want you to imagine what if your student was not afraid of the ACT? What if they were not terrified over the test? What if they actually ran towards the test instead of away from it? And what if their attitude changed from I can't get a 30 plus to I can? What would that do to their confidence? What would that do to what they were able to achieve, right? What doors would be open for them if they got there? And what financial incentives would be available to them if they were able to just crush their ACT and get into that 30 plus range where schools were now sending them money for them to go to school? Imagine that. What if that was what happened? Well, that could definitely be your student because it's already happened for other students that we've worked with that have gone through the ACT Acceleration Program. So when you look at the testimonial here on the left, this was Delaney. She saw a six point jump in her English score. She crushed the science section and saw a 10 point jump. And she did awesome in her math section, saw a four point jump there. She brought her ACT up from a 25 to a 30, right? She put in the time, she put in the work, and she was able to get the results that she didn't wish for, that she had to get. And then we had Julia here who took her score from a 22 to a 26, but when we looked at her English score, she crushed it. She went from a 24 to a 33, and she put in so much work and did absolutely everything that was expected of her to make those jumps that she was looking for. So Julia and Delaney just crushed it going through the program. Now, before we get into the actual training, I wanna just ask you to make a small agreement, right? I promise to show you everything in this training that's gonna help your students overcome those ACT hurdles that they've been struggling to get over here in the past. And what we have to realize is that we have to take action after we actually learn something, right? Information without implementation just leads to frustration. So promise me, let's make an agreement that we will take action. That might look like one of two things, it might just be hey, I'm gonna show this video to my, my parent. I'm gonna show this video to my son or daughter to get their take on it. You might wanna go ahead and implement the three steps I show you in the training to go ahead and start that journey for your son or daughter to start seeing that ACT score that they want. Or maybe you wanna learn how can I customize this for my students so that it fits them. We can discuss all of those things at the end of the training. Now, I want you to see if you can relate to this, right? Is your student feeling stressed out and frustrated because they don't have a plan in place to even reach their goal, right? Are they just kind of floundering around and they don't have the checkpoints in place to reach the top of the mountain? Are they feeling embarrassed that they can't figure out how the dots connect? Because a, a lot of students do. They keep taking the test and time after time, they can't figure out why is the correct answer A and not D. They both look right. They can't figure out where the dots aren't connected. Where is the break in the chain? And they might feel hopeless and they don't know which way to turn because once you see failure after failure, you start to think that you are the failure. And that's the worst thing in the world for anyone is when we identify with that. Failure is a good thing. But sometimes if we don't have someone there to tell us that, 
we start thinking that we are the failure. Now, you might have already hired a, a tutor or someone to actually work with your son or daughter on, on the ACT already, but maybe you didn't even see real change. Well, we're going to dive into why that is the case here and understand the key pieces that you might have been missing with that situation. So how do I know this, right? My name again is Kyle Simon. I'm the founder of Breakthrough Tutoring. And over the past decade, I've been working with students on math as well as ACT prep. And over that time period, right, that extended time period, I started to see patterns. Because I had worked with so many students, I started to see patterns and themes in why they were not finding the success that we wanted. <clears throat> so let's go through here now, guys. Let's see. Here is why your student is stuck. What are the problems that they are experiencing? Well, problem one is that they are trying to make this ACT journey completely on their own. They're trying to be a lone wolf, but what we have to realize is that if you are ever going to climb a mountain that is huge, let's just take Mount Everest for instance, you never want to take on that challenge by yourself because there are dangers, you don't know where to go, you might be lacking in encouragement and motivation and drive. And when you're by yourself, what happens? That voice starts creeping up in your mind and telling you that, ah, maybe you've studied enough. Maybe you can't do it. Those negative thoughts start creeping in and we have no one there to protect us because we are sitting there all by ourselves. So we have to understand that if we are going anywhere and we want to achieve a massive goal, like getting a 30 plus on the ACT, we have to surround ourselves with a group of people that are all going in the same direction, that all want the same thing, that are all motivated to do whatever it takes to get to that end goal, because that elevates everyone up. It draws everybody up when they're feeling discouraged and it provides that community when we need the encouragement the most. So we can't climb alone anymore here, guys. We need to be able to see that being a part of a community and a group to reach that challenge is a must. Now, problem two is that students are relying on their teacher and their tutor to get them to that score goal. And what we have to realize is that when someone else is trying to drag someone else up the mountain and they don't really wanna go, it's not gonna end well for the student, it's not gonna end well in that situation, and you're not gonna to get to that score goal that you want. So we have to understand that in order for students to reach that massive goal, they need to be placed in the driver's seat, and they need to learn how to drive their car and build the foundation and have that vision of where they wanna go. And the teacher and the tutor can be a supplement to that and help them on their journey. But when students rely on them completely, the drive just isn't there. The motivation is not there. So we have to help students to embody that, to identify with that and be able to say, you know what? I want to be an independent problem solver, someone that's going to drive their own learning. So problem number two, guys, is that we can't rely on the teacher and the tutor fully. We can use them as a supplement, but we need to be able to take responsibility for our own education. Now, problem three is focusing on strategy alone. And that's probably what a lot of other tutors are focusing on. Hey, how do I take the test? How do I answer the questions? How do I guess right? What are the tips and tricks? And many students think that that's what they're missing, right? They think that they just need the best strategy. Strategies are good, but they are key pieces of puzzle, of the puzzle that are missing, right? So we have to understand that, you know, just focusing on strategy alone is not everything. There are other pieces of the puzzle that we need to make sure are in place as well. Now, problem number four is ACT amnesia, right? If you've never heard of this, right? Amnesia just means that we are constantly forgetting things. Well, students struggle to remember tips and tricks because they don't use them regularly enough and they don't have a basic foundation on their fundamentals. So, you know, students either aren't meeting with their, their tutor or their instructor on a regular basis. And we need to understand that in order to build this confidence in our fundamentals, well, we need reps, we need repetition to move through that and we need practice. And finally here, problem five is that students are not tracking their progress over time. 
Now, when we think about tracking, what doesn't get tracked does not get managed. Let me say that again. What doesn't get tracked doesn't get managed. A lot of the time students are just taking tests and they're grading them and that's it. They're seeing, oh, I didn't do well, end of story. But they're missing a critical part of going back, grading their tests, and then going through and dissecting their mistakes. So we have to make sure that we are learning from our failures. Otherwise, we fall into a pattern of repeating those failures over and over and over again. Now, over the course of a student's prep time, we want to be recording all of those test scores so that we're able to see progress over time trended out so that we can continually boost that motivation and get that encouragement we need to keep pushing forward when things are hard. So how do we fix these problems? What is the key to getting past these challenges for your student? Well, let me introduce you guys to the 3C ACT acceleration method. Let's jump right into it. So many teachers and tutors simply provide students with strategies, and we talked about that a little bit earlier. Now, the pieces that are missing, you can see here that strategies is at the top of the pyramid, but we have two other pieces below this, and I refer to this as the learning trifecta. Now, in order to even get to the point where you're ready to have strategies, you need to be placed in an environment that is actually conducive for learning. So we talked about that team environment, that team mentality of saying, hey, the group is going on this mission. We want to make sure that we have support. We want to make sure that we have the tools. We want to make sure that we have the guide that can navigate around the traps. So we definitely need the environment to be in place. And after that, we need to make sure that we have the routines, the habits, and the mindset to actually get to that point. Because without those, it's kind of like we're building a house with a shaky foundation. The strategies are the actual walls and the roof, but you better have a solid concrete foundation of the routines and the environment in order to stabilize those structures, all right? So if your goal is to help your student feel more confident on the ACT, experience less stress and not be so fearful around this thing, and earn a 30 plus on the ACT, then you can't afford to leave this up to chance and just say, oh, you know what, we're just gonna let him keep taking test after test. It'll work out eventually. Or he'll learn those skills in school. Well, let me tell you, what they're teaching the students in school is not what this test even covers. It is an apples to oranges comparison and we need to understand that the skills that your student needs on the ACT are very different than what they're picking up in the classroom. So we need to understand those differences there. So as we launch into this, grab a pen and some paper. You're going to want to write this down. And step one here is that we are going to commit to change. So what does that mean? Well, committing to change, most students never define their goals or ever create any plans to reach them. And sometimes we're always testing out the waters. We always want to put one toe in and be like, well, is it warm? Should I get in? No, we can't do that anymore. We have to say, all right, I'm jumping in the pool. And you know what? It might be cold initially. And there might be that shock factor, but we've committed and we're going forward. Now, imagine all the people that sign up for a gym membership on January 1st. Now, ask the question, how many are actually committed to reaching their goals? Not many, because in many cases, so many of those people, after two or three weeks, they are out of the gym because it was too hard. They were like just dabbling around and wanted to see, okay, what's going on? What do I need to see here? Now, instead, what do we need to actually do to become that student that we want to, to commit? Well, we need to take a look at what an elite athlete does. Well, they are committed to reaching their goals and they find the right coaches, programs, and routines to get there. They get the right pieces of the puzzle around them so that they can be successful. Now, a successful student must commit to the process, develop a positive mindset, and create a plan without the plan nothing else changes. 
So don't let barriers stop you on this mission to get a 30 plus on the ACT. I love this quote, and this has had such an impact on my life, and I know it can do the same thing for you. And it's by Tony Robbins, and he said, if you want to take the island, then burn the boats. With absolute commitment come the insights that create real victory. Now, I read this quote week after week for the longest time, and I finally realized that the burning of the boats means that you are burning or letting the old you die. You're kind of saying, you know what, there is no escape. I am committing towards becoming this new person and becoming and embodying the pieces that I need to in order to reach that new goal. So Tony Robbins here has so many amazing quotes and that commitment quote should just sit with you because it can affect not only what you're doing here on the ACT, but any place in your life. So the question we have to ask ourselves is how bad do we want this? Well, we need to prepare your mindset. We need to evaluate your habits. We need to develop a plan and we need to make a promise to ourselves that we're not going to quit when things get hard, right? We need to become an elite ACT athlete so that you can get to the goal that you must have, right? And all of these things are key to being able to do that. Now, step two is that we have to conquer your ACT skills. So what do I mean by that? Well, in every single section of the ACT, English, math, reading, science, there are skills that we need to learn, that we need to understand at a very fundamental level. And what we can see here is that most students don't practice those fundamental skills at a rate that they should to reach mastery. They might look at them once or twice, but they can't explain them, they can't utilize them, and in turn, they can't implement them on the test when they're in that test taking scenario. So I want you to imagine someone who wanted to learn martial arts, but only decided that they needed to practice once a month. I think we can all agree that that person would say they know, you know, a particular martial arts, but they are not skilled in it whatsoever because they're not getting the reps they need. They are not an expert and they will not become an expert anytime soon with that um, prep schedule. Now, when we think of what elite martial art, art students do, well, they are dedicated to their studies and they know that the consistent repetition is going to build the muscle memory and the instincts that they need to just simply react when they're placed in certain scenarios. And that's what we have to understand about, you know, our students taking the ACT is that they don't have time to think because there are time limits. They have to be able to go in and have a plan and be able to react accordingly, instinctually even, because they don't have time to think. They have to understand, I've put in the prep, I know exactly what to do, and now I can you know, fly through the ACT at a whim. Now just remember that becoming a master and conquering your fundamental skills always requires failure to get there. We just have to remember that we're gonna fail forward. So just remember this, the master has failed more times than the beginner has ever tried, right? If you're an expert at something, you have failed and failed and failed and failed and failed until one day you don't fail anymore no matter what the situation because you figured out the ins and the outs of that particular skill so well that you know how to adapt to any situation. And that's what we wanna help you do on the ACT. So in a breakdown here, to conquer your skills, right? To build your skills from the ground up with no gaps, we have to learn the skills, right? From the ground up, we have to master our basic grammar skills. We have to master our basic formulas and applications in math. We have to learn to overcome our fear of word problems. So many students look at a word problem and they just say, nope, I'm done, I quit. And immediately, because they've built the habit of quitting. And we need to help our sons and daughters in this space to be able to, to persevere and to try and to challenge themselves. And friction is always going to be there. We can't grow without friction. And we need to learn that we need to track and learn from our mistakes. So build up your ACT muscle memory. And the last step here is that we have to challenge ourselves to grow. Now, when you think of a bodybuilder, 
you never see somebody who's trying to build muscle go into the gym and just simply grab the pink one pound weights and lift those for a year because they will see a little growth at first, but then nothing. And most students fall into this trap is that they stop challenging themselves and they soon develop that mental atrophy where they're not growing, they're stagnant, they're stuck. Nothing is changing. There's nothing more frustrating than not making progress. So we can't run away from challenge. We have to run towards it because like I just said, with friction, with challenge, with struggle and pain comes growth. And that's what we have to let our, our students know is that it's okay to feel that way, to feel frustrated that you're not getting it right away because eventually you will. So in order to continually grow, what do we have to do? Well, for bodybuilders, they are continually increasing their weights periodically over time so that they're constantly challenging their muscles. And with students, we have to do the same thing. We have to sharpen those skills week after week after week. Now, in order to do that, in order to challenge ourselves, in order to become better at anything, we have to understand that we have to move outside of our comfort zone. Now, the obstacle is the way that we get you to your end result. The obstacle is the tool. It's not the problem. Let me say that again. The obstacle is not the problem. It's the tool that is going to help you get to that future goal that you want. And sometimes the things we hate, the things we don't want to do are the things that we need the most because they make us stronger. When you think, oh man, I don't want to get up and work out, it's not going to make you better staying in bed. When you think about getting up, doing that workout, taking that next baby step in your journey, you're going to continually move up that mountain and that's what we want. So to wrap up step three, we have to challenge ourselves. Your only limit is the one you place on yourself. It's all up here. It's a mind game. It's where is your end point? Well, it's never any place if you always shoot to exceed that limit. So just remember, do one more problem. Tighten up the time limits. See how good your endurance is and your stamina. Put in place better study habits and prep for the impossible. Shoot for something exceptional. Don't shoot for average. Because guess what? If we shoot for perfection, if we come in at good or great, you're going to be thrilled. But if you shoot for average and don't make it, that's going to lead to stress. That's going to lead to pain. That's going to lead to frustration. So remember, the choices you make today will determine the person you are tomorrow. I want to help each and every one of you get to an insane and awesome ACT score moving forward. <clears throat> so looking at the 3C ACT acceleration method here, we want to commit to change. We want to conquer your fundamentals and we want to challenge yourself to grow. And again, this is already happening for students every single day. I worked with Megan here through the program and she was able to take her score from a 20 to a 27, huge growth, right? And she was super proud to take her English score from a 24 to a 30 to an eight point jump. She didn't even think that was possible, but she put in the work and she achieved that. And Grace here was able to hit a 32 on her ACT. And she was struggling on the science section. She couldn't get her score up past a 27. But with the skills that she learned and with the, the hard work and the focus that she put in, she was able to boost that up from a 28 to a 32 and get into all of the schools that she wanted to. So awesome job to Megan. Awesome job to Grace. Now, congrats on making it this far. I know that we have covered a lot, but I just want you to remember the agreement that we made. We said that, you know, the three steps here to master the ACT are going to take action, okay? Action on your part to say, you know what, I need to show this video to somebody, I need to implement these three steps, or I need to figure out how I can get help with implementing these three steps to customize it to my son or daughter's needs. And remember, if you just take this, if you just listen to it, well, it's just information at this point. We have to apply it. We have to implement it. Otherwise, we're going to feel stuck. We're going to feel stagnant and nothing is ever going to change. Now, you really have two choices. 
You can either go ahead and try to implement this on your own, kind of work trial and error, use old methods of learning, thinking that the school might help them prepare. Again, we've already talked about that that's not happening. Or you can go ahead and you can help your son or daughter become that expert at the ACT and reach that 30 plus that they're looking for. So remember, you can take control, you can learn the skills that are critically necessary and help your student get into an environment and build those routines that they're gonna need to do well on this test. So guys, I've set some time aside. I'd love to jump on a call with you guys, help you build out a plan and see if I can help you in the long run reach those goals. And we can go ahead, we can look at those three steps and I'm sure that we'll be able to go ahead and customize a plan just for your son or daughter. So I got the link here if you wanna go ahead and schedule a session to do that. Now, before we finish up today's training, I want you to take a look at Michael Jordan, Jeff Bezos and Eric Yoon. And these three men are all similar in one way. They all have something in common. Now, they are all extremely successful, and why is that? Why have they seen the success that they've gotten? Well, they all have decided to place people around them and build an environment around them and a structure and programs around them that help them elevate to the next level. They never hang with people that aren't doing that. They hang with people that are successful, that all want the same things because it pushes them to be better. So guys, I would love to help your son or daughter increase their ACT score, boost their confidence, and feel free to schedule a student success session using the link here below. Just remember, the cost of inaction, of not doing anything right now, there's a lot of pain associated with that. And a lot of that comes down to the financial costs of college. Colleges are constantly raising the cost and we have to say, you know what? It's a two prong approach. Mom and dad, you are saving and trying to help me pay for college. But as the student, I have responsibility here too. With a little bit of prep and some work, I can go ahead and achieve a high ACT score that can go ahead and help me reduce that burden on my parents and lower those financial costs. And guess what? I don't want you to feel like you have a lack of confidence or you're embarrassed or you're ashamed of your ACT score. Because if you're ashamed there, you're probably ashamed in other areas as well. I wanna help you boost your confidence and I wanna help your son or daughter get to that place where they're not just looking at killing it on the ACT, but they're killing it in life and in their job and in their career. So just remember that we do not wanna leave this up to chance. So again, guys, thank you for joining me for today's training. If you would like to set up a student success session, here is the link below, and I hope to speak with everyone soon. I hope you have a great day.